Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about class and structure. Class and structure are the basic building block of object-oriented programming. In some languages like C++, class and structure are almost identical. However, in Swift, class and structure are still very similar, but they are also very different. First, let's talk about the similarity. Class and structure are both used to package up a bunch of data, which are also called properties, and a bunch of functions, which are also called methods. So here we have a person who is a class and a house, which is a structure. And if we create a person, P, then we can access its property by doing p.name, p.age, and we can invoke its method by doing p.run. Same thing for the structure. If we create a structure h, which is a house, we can do h.streetNumber, h.area, h.upgrade, which is a method. So far, class and structure look very similar. Now let's talk about the difference between them. The biggest difference between class and structure is that a structure is a value type, and a class is a reference type. For example, we have h, which has a street number of 234, and then we do h3 equal to h. This is making a copy of h and assign that copy to h3. So totally we have two structure here. And if we change h3's street number to 000, it won't impact h. H's street number is still 234. But that is not the case for class. For example, P is a class and it has the name of Bob. And then we do P3 equal to P. Now, both P3 and P are referencing to the same object of a person. So totally, we still have only one person. So if we change P3's name to George, P's name also changed to George. So this is a big difference between a value type and a reference type. Now let's look at another example. Let p5 equal to p. Note that p5 is a reference type data and it is a constant. So p5 cannot be changed. If I do p5 equal to p3, that is an error. However, if I do p5.h equal to 99, that is not an error. So even though p5 is a constant, its property can still be changed. This is the behavior of a reference type data. A value type data will behave differently. For example, h5 equal to h, h5 is a value type and it's a constant. So if I do h5 equal to h3, that is definitely an error. However, if I do h5.area equal to 2000, that is also an error, even though the area is a variable. So if a value type is defined as a constant, nothing inside the data can be changed. That's the behavior of a value type. Now let's look at our last example. We have a function change name, which takes a person as a parameter. And inside of the function, we change its name to John. P is a person whose name is George, and we call change name on P, P's name is changed to John. So the function has changed the content of p, even though p is not an in-out. This is because p is a reference type. A value type will be different. If we want to do the similar thing to a value type data, we have to make the parameter as an in-out. And when we pass over the data to the function, we have to use ampersand sign to make it clear. Now let's talk about the equality. By default, the equal sign is not defined for both structure and class. So if I do h equal to h2, p equal to p3, they are both errors. However, a class has a unique operator called identity operator, which looks like this. The identity operator tells you if these two variables are referencing to the same object. So this will evaluate it to be true only if p and p3 are referencing the same object. If we have a p4 
and P4's name is same as P's name, P4's age is same as P's age, so P4 and P are identical, but this statement will still evaluate to be false because P and P4 are not the same object. Lastly, the structures and any other value type data cannot use the identity operator because for value type data, you cannot have two variables referencing the same object. We have talked about in length the difference between a value type and a reference type, and we know a class is a reference type and a structure is a value type. Now let's ask the question, who else is a value type and who else is a reference type? It turns out all the built-in data types are the value types. The int, uint, double, float, bool, string, array, dictionary, tuple, optional, they are all value types. This is because under the hood, they are all implemented with a struct. You might want to ask the question, isn't it inefficient for an array to be a value type? Because every time you make assignment, you are making a copy of the array. Swift is actually pretty smart at managing that. For example, if we have a1, which is an integer array, and then we do a2 equal to a1, in theory, we are making a copy of a1 and assign to a2. But under the hood, the copying is actually not happening yet. Since a1 and a2 are identical, it is not necessary to make the copy at this point. The copying will happen only if one of the array is changed. So if we do a2 append 8, now the copying has really happened. So as you see, Swift is pretty good at managing the efficiency of array and dictionary. Another thing to note is you can use equal sign to compare if two arrays are identical. This is because the operator equal is defined for arrays. Who else is a reference type? A function is a reference type, as we have talked about in the function tutorial. What about a closure? A closure is a function without name, so just like function, a closure is a reference type. Another smaller difference between a struct and a class is that a struct by default will have a memberwise initializer. So you can initialize a struct by initializing every property of the struct. A class doesn't have that by default. The last thing I want to point out is that all variables must be initialized before being used. For example, x is declared to be a person. If I do x.name equal to Bob, that is an error because x is not initialized yet. We have to initialize it with the initializer of the person before doing anything to x. This is also true for all the built-in data types. For example, i is declared to be an integer. If I do print line i, this is an error because i is not initialized. However, I can do i equal to 50. This is OK because this statement is not only an accessing of i, it is also happened to be an initialization of i. Another exception is about the optional. For example, var o is an integer optional. Now o is declared to be an integer optional, but at the same time, it is also initialized to nil. So o is already initialized at this point. That's all for now. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, and see you next time.